The Avengers of Harmony. Prologue. Chaos. Unleashed. The Cantalot sculpture garden was quiet, almost oblivious to the chaos caused by the changelings just outside of its boundaries. All was still, except for a large sculpture of a dragon cuis in the very center of the courtyard. A small crack ran up the side of the statue, slowly warming its way from head to toe. Slowly, more breaks apart, forming a giant web covering the statue. Then a mighty blast of magic ensued from the inside of the castle walls, sending the changelings flying into the mountains beyond. The earth shook violently, and the pieces of the Dragon QS statue shattered to the ground, revealing a very real creature underneath. Discord yawned. Oh, it's good to be free, he chuckled. Chaos shall rule once again. Several ideas plundering around... around. Okay. Discord yawned. Oh, it's good to be free again, he chuckled. Chaos shall rule once again. Several ideas of plaguing all of Equestria in endless disorder sped through his mind before he suddenly remembered a certain obstacle in his way. Oh, but what about those pony and the... What... Hmm. Oh, what about those ponies and the elements? Discord wondered out loud. If I want to rule all of Equestria... I will need something else to defeat them. Something else. Or someone else. A misshapen smile lit up Discord's face. I believe it's time to pay my dear friend Loki a visit. Discord snapped his fingers, and in a flash of green light, he was gone. Chapter 1. The Iron Mare Suit Twilight Sparkle had walked down the street of Ponyville. The Pegasi had cleared the skies to create a beautiful, sunny day. Ponies around her were happily chatting, shopping, or playing around. It was yet another beautiful day. Boom! There was a sudden explosion. A rocket fell from the sky, landing directly in front of Twilight. What an equestria! Awesome, it worked! A voice cheered from above. Twilight looked up to see a familiar cyan-colored Pegasus sitting in the clouds. Rainbow, she called up to the Pegasus. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that, Twy. Rainbow apologized. Chili Pepper and I were just testing out some of our newest rockets. Twilight cocked her head in confusion. Rockets? Yep, a bright orange Pegasus stallion beside Rainbow replied. Dash and I formed a rocket company. Spark Industries. I wanted to call it Dash Industries, but Pepper here wouldn't have it. Rainbow scolded. Anyways, the company's doing an amazing job. We've already have an order for a dozen rockets from Pinkie Pie. Wow, Twilight commented. That's great, you two. You bet, Rainbow exclaimed. The Pegasus Mayor paused for a moment before flying down to the Lavender Unicorn. You know, there is a secret project I've been working on, Dash continued in a quieter tone. But I need your magic to make it work. Rainbow Dash leaned closer to Twilight, whispering something in her ear. Sure, Dash, I'll be happy to help. Twilight replied after hearing the Pegasus' request. Great! Dash said excitedly. Let me just get a couple more supplies. Then I'll meet you back at the library. Pinkie Pie stood... Oh. Okay. I'll meet you back at the library. Rainbow Dash leapt into the sky, soaring above the clouds. Finally, she found the one pink earth pony she was looking for. Pinkie Pie stood in the meadow with Fluttershy 
a bow in her pink hooves with a quiver full of plunger-tipped arrows on her back. In a swift move, the bright pink mare drew an arrow and sent it flying right to the right into the center of the bullseye on the other side of the field. Oh, great shot, Pinky, Fluttershy commented quietly. Thanks, Pinky giggled. I've been practicing. Dash swooped down from the skies land and landed in front of the two mares. Hey, Pinky, Dash began. I was wondering if you had... Here you go, Dashy. Pinkie Pie grinned, thrusting exactly what Rainbow needed into the Pegasus's hooves. Dark blue metal paint. Um, thanks, Pinky. Rainbow replied, extremely surprised at her friend's quick reaction. You're welcome, Pinky exclaimed, happily firing more arrows at the target. All right, just one more thing, Rainbow Dash told herself before soaring off to the boutique. The Cyan Pegasus landed gracefully in front of a large, fairly pasted blue and pink building and rapped on the door with her hoof. Rarity! The door glowed with blue magic before swaying open. Oh, hi, Rainbow Dash, darling. The white unicorn behind the door greeted. Is there anything I can help you with? Actually, yes, Rainbow Dash replied. I was wondering if you had a big gem I could use. Rarity paused for a moment. Ah, yes, I have one that you'll absolutely love. The unicorn dashed over to a large red-violet chest in the back of the room. Her horn aglowed. Aha! she exclaimed. Here it is. Using her magic, Rarity pulled out a light blue gemstone carved in the shape of a lightning bolt. That's perfect, Rainbow smiled, taking the stone. Thanks, Rarity. You are most welcome, the unicorn replied. Rainbow Dash took to the skies once more. Oh, this is going to be awesome, she squealed to herself. Rainbow Dash arrived at the library a few hours later, nearly busting down the door in, in her excitement. Twilight, she called, heaving a burlap sack she had brought into the main room. Right here, Rainbow, the purple unicorn replied. Twilight gazed at the sack, which was making strange clanking noises. So, is that it? Yep, Rainbow Dash answered. Do you think you can do it? Well, I'll try my best. Twilight bent over. A furry of... A furry of red magic began to swirl around her horn. A beam of white light shot out of the lavender unicorn's horn striking the object in the bag and causing it to glow. A few moments later, Twilight collapsed on the ground, panting. I think it worked. Rainbow, Rainbow, her, Rainbow walked over to the sack, digging out a suit of armor. It was a full-body suit, painted blue with underlining parts of silver. A pair of metal wings protruded from the back, and in the center of the chest piece rested a lightning-shaped blue gemstone glowing with energy. The cyan filly cautiously reached out to touch the, to touch the suit. The suit made a strange shifting and clicking noise, beginning to cover its maker. The armor was light, yet sturdy. Rainbow's real wings fit comfortably inside the metal ones. The energy blasters Rainbow had placed in the bottom of her two front hooves felt warm with energy. Finally, the mask clicked into place, having only glowing blue slits for eyes. Ah, uh, yeah, Rainbow cheered 
her voice slightly robotic. The Iron Mare suit is ready for action. Let's take this baby out. The Iron Mare swore, soared out of the library, flying high to the skies with extreme speed. Rainbow sped through the clouds, feeling the sound barrier pushing against her. Energy began to crackle around her form, and then, boom! With a flash of color, a sonic rain boom ensued across the sky. Rainbow Dash quickly changed direction, shooting out upwards. She raised her hooves in front of her, flying with energy built up before firing a bolt into a nearby cloud. Wow, this suit is more awesomer than I dreamed. She exclaimed, all the ponies in town were so caught up in the sight of the metal pegasus soaring over Ponyville that they failed to notice the strange black portal opening in the sky above. Chapter 2. The Battles of Heroes Rainbow Dash zoomed above the clouds of Ponyville in the Iron Mare suit. Thoroughly enjoying the sounds of cheers coming from below. Suddenly, something collided violently with her, sending the Pegasus tumbling through the air. The information screens inside her helmet momentarily flashed red as Rainbow Dash regained her balance. What the hey? <laughs> Although hidden by her helmet, Rainbow's eyes wide widen at the sight before her. Three tall, two-legged alien creatures rushed towards her, riding upon what looked like a flying scooter. Without much thought, Rainbow Dash raised her hind legs and kicked the scooter, sending it, it and its passengers flying into the army of alien creatures behind them. Some of the creatures rizzed tall, spear-like weapons, shooting blue energy bolts at the armored Pegasus. Oh, so you want to do this? Rainbow asked tauntily. Then let's do this, putting the thrusters on the back of her suit to full power. Rainbow Dash charged in, into the army, firing her own energy bolts at the aliens. But there were too many for just one Pegasus to handle. More poured out of the dark hole in the sky, landing on the streets of Ponyville. Several raised their spears and shot at the panicking ponies. What in thunderations are those things? Are these things? Applejack cried as she kicked a few of the aliens coming near her. They're Chutaras. They're two Charas. Twilight shouted, shooing off some magic bolts. Cho what now? Chitara, Twilight repeated. Warrior-type aliens that are created for the sole purpose of destruction. I read about them in the Canterlot Library. Meredith burst out of her shop to see the massive destruction. My, whatever is happening out here? Oh, hiya, Rarity, Applejack greeted, bucking a few Chutara. These are Chutara, and they're attacking Pony... These Chutara are attacking Ponyville, and... Applejack was cut off in mid-sentence, as the unicorn sprung from the doorstep and onto a Chutara, kicking it squarely in the chest. Wow, Rarity, Applejack complimented. I didn't think you had it in you. Always the element of surprise, darling, Rarity replied, flipping over a few fallen bodies to attack some more of the oncoming Chitaras. Applejack chuckled, but her face abruptly turned grim. Rarity, watch out! Hesitantly, the orange earth pony seized an abandoned trash can lid and threw it towards the Chitara behind Rarity. She swiftly leapt over the wreckage to the fallen trash can lid, lifting it high to, def to deflect an oncoming blast. 
Twilight Sparkle also had her fair share of alien attackers to deal with. The Lavender Unicorn scrunched up her face in concentration, and her horn began to glow with a bright white light. With a swift let... With a thunderous roar, lightning erupted from Twilight's horn, dem dem demolishing the army of Chitara surrounding her. Meanwhile, Pinkie Pie was bouncing all over the city, firing her plunger arrows at the Chitaras. Take that, you big meanies! She shouted, shooing an arrow straight into an oncoming attacker's face. The pink earth pony bounced all over to where Twilight, Applejack, and Rarity were fighting, happily joining the fray. Hey, has anyone seen Fluttershy? she asked. I'm over here, a small voice whispered, hardly audible above the din of the battle. The butter-colored Pegasus pony cowered behind a fruit cart that miraculously been left untouched. Fluttershy Twilight yelled, rushing over to the Pegasus. You need to get out of here. Suddenly, an energy ball hit Applejack directly in the chest. The orange earth pony sprawled, into the, sprawled onto the ground. Applejack! Twilight cried. Fluttershy stared in horror at Applejack. Her friend lying on the ground, a burnt mark on the earth pony's chest. How dare you, Fluttershy stated, her voice growling, growing suddenly louder as she turned to face the Chitara army. How dare you! With a surprising, with a surprising speed and ferocity, Fluttershy charged headlong into the army of aliens, bowling quite a few of them over. The Pegasus hardly thought about what she was doing. She was just blindly... She just blindly attacked those who dared to hurt her friends. Twilight rushed over to where Applejack lay. Applejack, are you okay? I'm fine, Twilight, Applejack replied, struggling to her hoofs. Just a little burned and bruised, that's all. The unicorn nodded. Her face still concerned over her friend. Twilight then spotted the trash can lid Applejack had been wielding a few feet away. She swiftly galloped to it, placing her horn upon it. The lid began to glow with a strange magenta fire, and slowly began to change. The flimsy aluminum became a durable metal. The dingy gray color of the lid changed into a firm crimson, a green silhouette of an apple embellished on, upon it. Here, AJ, Twilight panted once her spell was completed. Wow, Twi, Applejack commented, taking her new shield. Thanks. Where did you learn to do that, Sugar Cube? A simple transformation spell, the unicorn replied. Just upgraded it. Suddenly, Rainbow, Jazz, Rainbow Dash's voice called out from above. Hey guys, I'm bringing the party to you. The Iron Mare suit staked across the sky following an enormous mechanical serpent creature, a leviathan. Its fiery red eyes glowing, glowing with malice. Um... Rainbow, darling, Rarity stated. I don't see how that's a party. Without so much as a warning, Flarshy leapt onto the head of the large beast, stared directly into its glowing eyes. The leviathan quivered beneath the stare, caught crashing to the ground. But more were coming. Numish Tatara poured through the portal in the sky. The ponies bravely fought them off, but the six of them could not hold off the attacks for long. Suddenly, 
Ver Rarity perked up. Idea! She sang, turning to the Iron Mare. Dash, darling, would you give me a lift? She asked. I have a plan. You got it. Rainbow Dash replied, letting Rarity jump onto her back, soaring toward the portal. <laughs> Calculating... Yeah, calculating, Rarity lowered her horn. A blue light began to swirl around it. A bolt of magic shot out from her horn, striking the portal. The black hole in the sky began to grow blue. But slowly, and slowly but surely, the portal grew smaller and smaller until it finally disappeared. On the ground, okay. on the ground, Applejack, Twilight, Pinkie Pie, and Fluttershy continued to fight the remaining Chitara. Then, as the portal closed, the aliens began to shudder, all falling to the ground, motionless. Well, I'm sure that I'm sure glad that's all over. Applejack panted, collapsing beside her friends. Yeah, Fluttershy agreed in her normal, quiet tone of voice. Rainbow Dash landed beside Twilight, the Iron Mare suit folding neatly into an inconspicuous vest. What were those things doing here anyway? The Blue Pegasus asked. I don't know, Rainbow Dash, Twilight responded. The Chitara were only supposed to be an old mare's tail. Meanwhile, Pinkie Pie was bouncing merrily in a circle. We won! We won! She sang. The pink pony abruptly stopped her hopping. Hey, you know what this calls for? A party! She began leaping around to Sugar Cube Corner, mumbling about all the thing, all the supplies she would need. Twilight! Twilight! Said Unicorn whirled around to see Spike sprinting towards her, a squirrel, a scroll in his hand. What is it, Spike? She asked. Urgent message from Princess, the dragon paint panted, collapsing in front of Twilight. An urgent message? Twilight wondered out loudly. Using her magic, Twilight levitated the scroll up and began to read. Dear Twilight, you and your friends must come to Counterlaw as soon as possible. This is of utmost importance. Discord has been freed and every pony including Twilight, gasped. What? But how in tar nations? Applejack wondered. This sh That shouldn't be possible, Rarity exclaimed. I know, girls. Just let me finish the letter. Twilight stared, her eyes wide with shock. I don't think that is the worst part. Fluttershy, Rarity, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, and Applejack nodded. Twilight cleared her throat and continued to read. Discord has been freed, and he was, and he has teamed up with another wielder of chaos from another realm. I fear for what the two of them have planned, and I'm afraid to say that it is not only Equestria that is in danger. Director Nick Fury of Strategic Homeland, in Invasion Enforcement and Le Logical Division, a Shield for short is here with me. He understands the situation better than I and shall explain it upon your arrival. Sincerely, Princess Celestia. Pinkie Pie, your party will have to wait, Twilight instructed. We need to get to Canterlot. We need to get to Canterlot and fast. Tony Stark as Iron Man soared between the skyscrapers, dodging the energy blast from his pulsers. The Jatara had decided to make an unexpected appearance today, and no one knew where they were coming from. All Tony knew was that the Avengers were needed. Iron Man landed in the middle of the city, where his fellow Avengers were gathered. Bruce, Bruce had hulked up and was now bashing the heads of two Jatara together. Natasha fired bullet after bullet at the aliens. 
sometimes performing swift combat moves when the energy got too close. Hawkeye shot his specialized arrows at the Chitara, causing them to explode violently. Captain America and Thor were fine side by side, fending off attackers with hammer and shield. Is it just me, or does there seem less than last time, Clint asked, firing another arrow straight into a Chitara's head. You know, now that I look at it, yes, Tony replied, taking off to survey the surroundings. The crowd Chitara was significantly less than their last battle, and he couldn't help but wonder why. Suddenly ra rain began to pour down from the sky. Tony ignored it at first, but then his boosters began to become a bit shaky. He began to worry. Jarvis? He called. Yes, sir, the robotic butler replied. Can you get an analysis of this rain? Tony asked, landing beside Hawkeye. A few moments later, Jarvis replied. It seems to be chocolate milk, sir. Chocolate milk? Tony exclaimed. Clint quickly quickened an eyebrow at Iron Man's exclamation before sticking his tongue out into the rain. Yep, he confirmed. That's definitely chocolate milk. Pretty good chocolate milk, if I do say so myself. Thor suddenly gazed up at the sky. What are those clouds? He pondered. They're pink, Cap trailed off, an idea forming in his head. No, it, it can't be. Captain, it's raining chocolate milk, Natasha stated. I'm pretty sure those clouds could be anything right about now. The God of Thunder twirled his hammer in his hands a few times before thrusting into the air. Lightning shot out from it, the electric bolts cheering into the pink clouds and causing them to and, and turning them and causing them to turn into ashes. My my, a voice stated from behind the Avengers. That was quite the impressive trick there, brother. The six whirled around to see a familiar enemy standing before them, dressed in his dark green and gold as guardian armor. Loki, Thor growled. Natasha shook her head. This doesn't make any sense. Makes sense, a new voice chuckled. Oh, my dear Black Widow, what is the fun in their making sense? A strange creature... A strange creature stood towards the Avengers. It was a colorful beast comprised of many different parts of animals. Who are you? A confused Clint asked. Uh, ah, yes, Clint Barton. Otherwise known as Hawkeye, the beast grinned. Well, that's a very interesting question indeed. You are a Dracuus, a Dragoncuus, Thor suddenly remarked. Excellent observation, Thor Odinson, the creature laughed. But for further introductions, I am Discord, spirit of disharmony and chaos. So you know our, so you know all of our names, Tony stated. Well, that is very impressive, but it will take a lot more. Oh, I know much more than your names, Mr. Stark, Discord smirked. But now, if you'll excuse us, we have chaos to spread. Discord snapped his talon-like fingers, and in a flash of green light, he, Loki, and the Chitar, and he, Loki, the Chitar, and the pink... Chocolate milk rain clouds disappeared. What do you think he's planning? Steve asked. Tony lifted the faceplate off his off his helmet. I don't know, Cap, but whatever it is, Tony was cut off by a voice in his earpiece. Mr. Stark, the voice stated, you and the other Avengers are needed in the helicarrier immediately. All right, all right, fine. We'll be there, Tommy responded. 
turning to face the Avengers. Guys, we need to we need to get to the Hela the Hela carrier stat. Thor nodded, grabbing Captain America's hand and taking to the sky. Both Clint and Natasha grabbed onto the Iron Man suit. Oh, and Bruce, Tony called to the Hulk before taking off. You might want to find a change of clothes. The Hulk growled at Tony before bouncing off. Tony smirked before pulling, pulling his faceplate down and soaring away into the thankfully chocolate rain-free sky. Director Nick Fury stared out of one of the stained glass windows of Canterlot Palace. Celestia came up behind, beside him, having just sent the letter to Twilight and her friends. Do you think it will work? the princess asked. It has to, Nick replied, turning to face the alicorn. It has been quite some time since I last saw you, Celestia. Celestia smiled. Indeed. You helped us defeat Discord once, Nick, and now you must defeat him again. But this time, Discord is not alone, Nick stated. A new age of heroes is rising, and they are, and they are our only hope. Chapter 3. Mission Briefing The doors of the Grey Hall burst open as six ponies hurried inside. Princess Celestia, Twilight called, rushing up to her mentor. We came as fast as we could. What is happening out there? Does this have to do with the Chitara? I thought they were just... Celestia held up her hoof to stem the flow of questions. Like I have mentioned in the letter, Discord has escaped. And he has partnered with another wielder of chaos. By the name Loki. The princess sighed. I have never dealt with Loki before, but I know he will be a more challenging and ruthless foe. Wait, Rainbow Dash interrupted. This Loki guy sounds a lot like Discord. What makes him much worse? Loki is basically a god, a voice replied from the corner. A tall two-legged figure stepped out from the shadows, but he was not like the Chitara. His skin was dark brown instead of gray and he wore a long coat and an eye patch over one eye. My little ponies, this is Director Nick Fury of S.H.I.E.L.D. A human, if I must add. Celestia introduced. He has dealt with both Discord and Loki in the past. Nick nodded his head. Loki is no ordinary wielder of chaos. He is much more powerful and vicious than Discord. In the past, Loki has killed 80 people, in two days. This caused all of the ponies' eyes to widen. Discord had made ponies ride up walls and sneezing over buildings, but he never killed any of them, let alone 80. Now, Loki and Discord do not pose a threat to just Equestria. Twilight, do you remember le learning about why could see the world tree? Twilight asked. Celestia nodded her head. But that's just an old mare's tale, the purple unicorn exclaimed. I am afraid not. Celestia responded. The world tree has linked together the nine realms since the beginning of time. Equestria is just one of these realms. Nick here comes from Midgard, or Earth, the realm of humankind. Loki, however, originates from both Asgard and Juhem, two realms of beings with immense power. And Loki is not afraid to use this power, Nick continued. He nearly destroyed a city once, and he will not object to doing this again. And with Discord and the Chitara on his side, my world Earth does not stand a chance. That is where you come in, Celestia stated. The sex of you must travel with Nick to Earth and defeat Loki and Discord once and for all. The six ponies huddled together for a moment. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not too comfortable with this whole traveling through worlds thing, 
Applejack whispered. I'm not sure... I'm not too sure of it either, Applejack. But Princess Celestia and Mr. Fairy are counting on us to help. Twilight replied. And besides, Pinkie Pie added, it will be fun. Twilight turned to face Nick and the princess. Princess Celestia? Nick Fury? It would be an honor for us to wield the elements of harmony once more and stop Discord and Loki. Ah, but there lies a problem. The elements of harmony are powerless on Earth. You six must defeat Discord and Loki using other ways. Other ways? Applejack wondered. What in tarnations do you mean by other ways? A couple of months ago, Loki and the Chitara attacked Earth. Nick explained. A group of heroes were formed to stop him. They had no elements of harmony or anything like that. Yet despite all odds, they won and saved Earth. The human side. I still believe in heroes. And from what Celestia has told me about you six, I believe that you are up to the task. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Rarity blushed, flattered. Now, know this, Celestia added. You will not be alone. The group of heroes Nick mentioned will be your allies during this mission. Applejack. I will recommend you keep that shield with you, Nick advised. And Rainbow Dash, keep that vest of your keep that vest on at all times. You never know when that suit of yours will come in handy. Twilight mm. Rainbow gasped at the man. But how my suit Celestia smirked and winked at the blue pegasus. I may have told Nick everything I know about you six. She smiled. The princess then lowered her horn, and a gold light began to swirl around it. The light grew in the size until it became a large shining portal. I wish you all the best of luck. Nick stepped through the portal, disappearing in a flash of gold. Well, girls, are you ready? Twilight asked, gazing at her friends. Yep, Pinky grinned, giving the unicorn a salute. I'm as ready as I'll ever be, Applejack stated, adjusting her shield on her back. Fluttershy shrank back a bit. Well, um, yes. Rarity sighed. Well, I suppose I have to do without my accessories. Let's go tick. Let's go kick some Discord tail. Rainbow Dash cheered. Twilight squared her shoulders and took a deep breath. Well, here we go. She held her head high and stepped into the golden light, closely followed by Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, Rarity, Applejack, and Fluttershy. Celestia watched the ponies disappear through the gateway. S stay safe, my little ponies. She mumbled wor worry. She mumbled, the world depends on you. The Avengers all gathered in the conference room of the helicarrier. Most of them haven't even bothered to change out of their suits. In fact, the only one who had changed was Bruce. And that was only because the other guy was too big to fit in the room. Suddenly, a golden swirl of light appeared in the middle of the room. A familiar figure, clad in black, stepped out of the light. The glow soon diminished until it was gone. Wow, Nick. Great entrance, Tony commented, lifting the faceplate off of his suit. Director Fury, what is going on, Natasha asked, walking over to Nick. I will explain everything, Nick promised. I believe all of you have seen the strange weather patterns around the globe. All the Avengers nod, unsure of where this was going. Well, these are the doings of an old foe of mine from my younger days, Discord. The Dragonquist the dragon we saw earlier? Thor asked. I see that you have become acquainted with him. Well, Discord has freed Loki from has freed Loki and formed an alliance with him, which creates 
a rather dangerous duo for us to deal with. Now, I have consoled the leader of Discord's homeworld and an ally of mine, Princess Celestia. And she has recruited the help of six heroes as well. I have met with them, and they are more than ready. Nick was cut off as the gold golden light suddenly sparked in the middle of the room. Swirling and glowing six ponies all tumbled out, each various bright colors. One was colored orange with a blonde mane and hair tied back. A cowboy hat on her head and a crimson shield on her back. Another was a bright shade of bubblegum pink with frizzy magenta mane and tail. Is every pony okay? A purple pony, no, unicorn, with a dark blue mane and tail staked with pink and purple, asked the rest. I'm okay, a quiet butter yellow pony with a drooping pink mane and tail replied, ruffling her wings. A pegasus, Steve mused, and I thought nothing could surprise me. Ugh, a bright blue pegasus groaned. Is there any way to make interworld travel a bit more, you know, comfortable? Tony raised his eyebrows at the, pon at the pony's rainbow-colored hair, but decided not to say anything. Oh, my mane, a white unicorn whined, attempting to fix her well-curled violent mane. The orange pony sc scrambled to her feet, gazing at her surroundings. Uh, girls, I think they're staring at us. She stated with a heavy southern twain, gusting to the Avengers. The Avengers then became aware that they were gasping at the ponies, and then quickly closed their mouths. Horses? Clint asked. Seriously, Director? These are ponies, Barton. Not horses, Nick corrected. And they have saved their home world more than once. Hey! The rainbow-maned one suddenly exclaimed, flying up to Tony Stark's face. You stole my idea. Your idea? Tony asked indignantly. Yes, my idea, the Pegasus replied, pressing the lightning-shaped button on the dark blue vest she wore. Loud shifting and clicking noises were heard, as, and as if by magic... Metal armor sprouted out of the vest, forming to the Pegasus's body. Within a matter of minutes, the faceplate clicked into place. The Iron Mare suit completely assembled. Impressive, Tony complimented. Now tell me, did you place targeting screens inside the helmet? The Pegasus finished for him. You bet. A grin spreaded on Tony's face. I like this one, he remarked, stepping, to stepping towards the Iron Mare. Name's Tony Stark. Genius, playboy, philanthropist, and the one and the only Iron Man. He grinned, holding out his hand. Name's Rainbow Dash. The fastest flyer in all of Equestria. And the one and the only Iron Mare. The Pegasus replied with a smirk, taking the man's hand and hoof and giving it... A firm shake. Wow, Steve remarked. I never thought I'd meet someone who matched Tony's cockiness almost perfectly. You and me both, partner, the, the orange pony agreed. My name's Applejack, she continued, holding out her hoof. The captain took the pony's hoof in greeting. I'm Steve Rogers. It's a pleasure to meet you, Steve, Applejack grinned. Steve couldn't help but grin back. He had a feeling that the two of them would become good friends. Clint smiled when he noticed the quiver of arrows on the pink pony's back. Hey, he greeted. My name's Clint Burton, also known as Hawkeye. Do you use the bow and arrow too? 
Well, yes, the pony replied, her voice high-pitched and bubbly. I mean, the bow and arrow is like the best thing ever created. Well, besides chocolate cake. And, I mean, who can top that? Oh, I'm Pinkie Pie. But you can just call me Pinky or Pie. I really don't mind any of them. Hawkeye couldn't help but chuckle at Pinky's rambling. It was really quite endearing. Thor approached the purple unicorn, who was gazing at the several gadgets and screens. They are quite fascinating, are they not? Thor asked. The unicorn jumped slightly at Thor's voice, but then quickly regained her composure. Oh yes, she replied eagerly. I can't believe building such things is possible. Thor chuckled. Yes, the things these mortals are able to come up with. The unicorn cocked her head. You speak of them as if you're not from here, she remarked. Indeed, I am not from Earth, Thor stated. I am from Asgard, but I protect Earth with my life. Asgard, the unicorn wondered out loud. I would love to hear more about it. I'm Twilight Sparkle. It's a pleasure to meet you. And you are? I am Thor Odison. Thor answered. I would love to hear more about your homeland. Equestria, is it not? You've heard of it? Twilight asked. Why, of course, Thor laughed. The princess, the princess of Equestria visited us a few years ago to renew our peace treaty. Wow! I didn't know the princess had contact between other realms, Twilight smiled. So, Thor, tell me more about Asgard. Thor returned Twilight's grin. Well, it is... Well, it is a magnificent place. Bruce noticed the yellow Pegasus standing off to the corner, almost cowering amongst the crowd of ponies and people. Hello, Bruce greeted softly, coming over to her. I'm Dr. Bruce Banner. Uh, I'm Fluttershy, the Pegasus whispered. It's nice to meet you, Fluttershy, Bruce, Bruce replied. His experience with shy children patients helped him. Tell me, why are you here? You don't seem to be the adventurous type. Oh, I'm not, Fluttershy confirmed. But my friends are go were going, and, well, I went with them. Ah, uh, I under... Ow! Bruce yelped as something sharp poked his side. Tony appeared behind Bruce, holding a sharp metal pointer in his hand. Seriously, man, what's your secret? He asked. Yoga? Zen? Tony, would you please... Bruce was cut off as Fluttershy flew right up to Tony's face. Why did you do that? She asked sternly. Why did you hurt him? Bruce raised his hands and surrender. Okay, okay, jeez. He walked over to Rainbow Dash, who was failing miserably to muffle her snickering. Fluttershy landed on the ground, looking sheepishly at Bruce. I'm sorry about that, she apologized. It's just, you have another guy, don't you? Bruce realized, gazing at the Pegasus. Well, I guess I kind of do, Fluttershy replied. It It's just sometimes I get... I could get so worked up, I just lose control, and I understand, Bruce did. Don't worry, you're not the only one like that. Fluttershy stared at him for a moment, her teal eyes widened with surprise, but then a grin broke out on her face, and the two of them continued to talk about their other guys. Natasha Romanoff gazed at the pair of ponies and humans, or, in one case, Asgardians, talking around the room. Excuse me, a rather elegant voice stated. Natasha whipped around to see the white unicorn gazing at her. I just wanted to say, what an exquisite outfit you have, the unicorn continued. You really think so? Natasha questioned, raising an eyebrow. Oh, of course, darling, the unicorn exclaimed. It's incredibly fashionable, but it's simple and flexible enough to serve as a practical suit. You seem to know your way around fashion, Natasha commented. Oh, I hope I do. I am Rarity, Ponyville's premium fashion designer. 
Rarity replied. I also do a bit of martial arts training. She added in a quieter voice, but that's just a secret. Always the element of surprise. Natasha smiled. I'm Natasha. Both Unicorn and w Widow turned their attention to Tony and Rainbow Dash, who were happily chatting with each other like they've known each other forever. Oh, those two will get along famously, Rarity remarked. Natasha shook her head, chuckling. Oh, you don't know what Mr. Stark's idea of famous is. Chapter 4 My Pinky Senses Are Tingling There, that should do it. Twilight pulled her horn away from the electronic screens, the rosy glow around her horn slowly fading. She sat in the posterior white lab coat alongside Bruce and Tony. What is it? Bruce asked, coming over beside her. I've enchanted one of your energy tracking systems to so that it tracks magic instead. The unicorn replied, Magic uses a specific type of energy, and since this tracker follows energy, it was relatively simple to modify it to track magical energy. A proud smile slipped onto her face. Wherever Discord and Loki are, this should pick them pick up the high magic levels. Great, Tony stayed, clapping his hands together. Now I can get back to this. He sat himself on the table and began fiddling with one of the touchscreens. Um, Mr. Stark? Twilight gazed at the man in confusion. What exactly are you doing? Tony looked up for a brief moment. As of right now, I am hacking into S.H.I.E.L.D.'s database. I want to see if they have any useful information about you and your friends. He turned his attention back to the screen. Within moments, I will have gained access to all of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s most classified files. Bruce groaned. Oh, not this again. But wouldn't you get in trouble? Twilight asked. It's not that big of a deal, Tony dismissed casually. I like to think that it's S.H.I.E.L.D.'s fault from keeping those secrets from us, actually. Twilight shook her head. But, Mr. Stark, don't bother, Bruce interrupted. Once he gets started on something, you can't stop him. Thank you, Doctor, for taking my side. Tony thanked, concentrating on the screen. Almost got it. Meanwhile, on the bridge of the helicarrier, Fluttershy, Thor, Rainbow Dash, Natasha, and Rarity all stood around the conference table, where they had first met. All was silent except for the electronic sounds of the controls of the helicarrier below them. Rainbow Dash groaned, flopping back in her seat. Ugh, this is so boring. When are we actually going to do some awesome fighting or something? I do not think it is wise to plunge headlong into battle, Thor stated. Loki is a formidable opponent, and not one to be toyed with. And remember what happened the last time we fought Discord? Fluttershy reminded the rainbow main Pegasus quietly. Rainbow rolled her eyes. So we can do better this time. I'm sick of all this waiting around. Rainbow Dash, darling, it's only been ten minutes. Rarity reprimanded. Ugh, fine, whatever. I'm going out for a fly. Rainbow Dash hopped out of her seat, straying out, the, straying out of the room in the direction of one of the hangers. The four who were left at the table stared after the rainbow-colored mane. After a few moments, Natasha asked, So, is she always like this? Rarity sighed. Yes, Rainbow Dash can be quite impatient at times. Natasha cocked her head, analyzing the blue pegasus and her personality. I see. Suddenly, all the screens flashed red, casting a strange scarlet glow around the room. Director, a crew member called. Someone is trying to hack into our system. Thor, Flesh, I, Natasha, and Rarity all rushed to the railing, gazing down at the scene below them. 
Keep the security systems intact, Fury barked. Protect the classified files at all costs. What's going on? Fleshy inquired softly, shrinking back at Fury's loud tone. Someone is trying to steal S.H.I.E.L.D.'s information. Natasha explained in terms she hoped the Pegasus would understand. The Russian agent rolled her eyes. I can only think of one person who would be crazy enough to do that. Twice. Twilight stared over Tony's shoulder at the screen. The man had successfully hacked into the database, showing the lab trio dozens of secrets from S.H.I.E.L.D. The unicorn would have informed the others if it weren't for that specific project that caught her attention. Suddenly, the door of the lab burst open, and Natasha, Rarity, Fleshy, and Thor all came charging in. Stark, what do you think you're doing? Natasha exclaimed angrily. This is the second time this has happened. Well, then S.H.I.E.L.D. needs to strengthen its firewalls, Tony remarked casually. Pardon me, Mr. Stark, but why in Equestria are you stealing S.H.I.E.L.D.'s information? Rarity questioned. That is absolutely unacceptable behavior from someone as high class as you. Oh, come on. It's just a bit of harmless investigation, Tony defended. Harmless to you, maybe, a voice said from the doorway. Nick Fury walked into the lab, an irate expression on his face. Stark, we have been over this. You are not to be hacking into S.H.I.E.L.D.'s classified information. Tony gave a half-hearted shrug of acknowledgement, continuing to pursue the files alongside Bruce and Twilight. Director, would you mind telling us what this Project Ponies is? He inquired suddenly. Project Ponies is a covert operation not to be disclosed to persons not involved with the project. Nick retorted. Well, I think we are considered involved in this project, seeing as all of our pony accomplices' names are listed here, Bruce replied, his voice rising suddenly. Rarity's eyebrows followed together in confusion at, this, at his statement, and Flourish I shrieked back in fear. Our, our names? She stuttered out. Yep, Tony replied. He stepped closer to Nick, a serious, threatening expression on his face. I want to know what S.H.I.E.L.D. has to do with these ponies, Director. S.H.I.E.L.D. had been too middlesome for his liking in the past, and he wanted to stop that above all else. Nick sighed. Project Ponies is the potential observation network of interworld equestrian system. He finally explained. It is a project developed to search for possible assistance of S.H.I.E.L.D. and to spy on potential allies or enemies. The system spans over many worlds in the universe, including Equestria. Twilight eye, Twilight's eyebrows knit together as she tapped a file labeled Agents on the screen with her hoof. Immediately, a picture of a familiar gray pegasus with a blonde mane and tail and cross eyes appeared. Flare shy's eyes wide. D derpy hooves? Now, what in Equestria is she doing in that file? Rarity wondered. Derpy hooves is a cover name for Agent Ditsy Do. Nick informed them. Agent Dew was assigned to Ponyville, which is now S.H.I.E.L.D., which is how S.H.I.E.L.D. and Princess Celestia know so much about the events there. Well, that explains a lot. Twi <clears throat> well, that explains a lot, Twilight remarked dryly. This perfectly explains the princess's uncanny ability to appear in Ponyville precisely at the opportune moment. It also helped to understand Derpy's, uh, no, Ditsy Doo's, habit of appearing in the strangest of places, including Fleshy's chicken coop or in the apple bobbing tab at the 
Nightmare Night celebration. I can't believe Derby of all ponies would be a spy, Flesh Eye whispered, astonished. Suddenly, the trackers in the room started frantically beeping. Twilight scurried over to the magical tracker. The magic levels are off the charts. So are the energy readings, Bruce added, clicking the other tracker. Hey, every pony. All occupants in the lab rolled around to see Pinkie Pie in the hallway, shaking and shuddering. Behind her, Applejack, Clint, and Steve, all apparently chasing the bouncing pink pony. Pinky seemed to shudder violently for a moment before her knees suddenly twitched together and she fell flat on her face. Pinkie Pie, what in tarnations was that? Applejack asked. I don't know, Applejack, the pink pony honestly replied. I never felt that sense before. I've never felt that pinky sense before. Steve cocked his head. What's pinky sense? No. Steve cocked his head. Wait. Pinky sense? That's Pinky's psychic ability to predict what happens in the near future based upon certain motions her body makes. Twilight explained. Though if she has never felt that particular sign before, I'm not sure what it means. Well, the shudder does usually mean a doozy's about to happen, right, darling? Rarity inquired. Yep, Pinky replied, but the knee twitch usually means something scary is about to happen. And I don't know what the failing down means. Pinky trailed off as she began to shake violently once more, moving down the hall. Maybe it means that a really bad and really scary doozy is about to happen then, Fireshy offered, evidently frightened by the protest. I don't know, Fireshy, Twilight replied, but I'm not sure I want to know. Rainbow Dash walked into one of the open hangers of the helicarrier, smiling as she breathed in the fresh air. Rainbow picked up a spare comlink before activating her suit. The armor swiftly clicked into place within moments. Rainbow Dash was soaring beside the helicarrier, rocketing through the clouds at breakneck speed. Woohoo! she whooped as she whirled around a cloud. Now, that is what I'm talking about. The armored Pegasus pulled off a few loop-de-loops before slowing down a bit. Man, that was awesome! Twilight cheered. Rainbow cheered to herself. Her cheer, her cheering mood soon dissipated as she spotted a strange pink object on the horizon. She pulled out her boosters, speeding toward the unknown object. The Pegasus hadn't even traveled a mile before she could identify the objects. Hesitantly, she put her hooves to full power before shooting back towards the helicarrier. As she flew, Rainbow Dash turned on the comm link that she had borrowed on. Uh, guys, I think I found Discord and Loki. Chapter 5 Rainbow Dash's voice echoed through the halls of the helicarrier. Pinkie Pie's pinky sense abruptly stopped, and she, Applejack, Clint, and Steve joined the others in the lab. The Avengers and Pony stared at each other, the same determined look plastered on their faces. Nick gazed at the occupants of the room. Gentlemen, ladies, he addressed, you're up. We're on it, Director. Steve gave a swift nod before shrying out the door, closely followed by Natasha, Clint, Bruce, Thor, and Tony. Nick turned to the ponies. I believe the princess sent you six on special items I think you will find most useful. Nick stayed exiting the room. Twilight raised her eyebrows in confusion before walking out the lab. 
Rarity, Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy, and Applejack followed. Oh my, Fluttershy meekly stuttered. I... I have a very bad feeling about this. Twilight and Company trotted through the halls. Eventually, they reached two sets of doors. One sign ha One had a sign reading, Avengers Suit Room, while the other was labeled simply with ponies. Naturally, the five entered the latter room. Twilight, Rarity, Applejack, Fluttershy, and Pinkie Pie found themselves inside a central chamber with various hallways branching off from the main room, each with a name labeled above the entryway. Each pony had identical curious and awestruck expressions on their faces as they each went into their respective halls. At the end of each hall stood a glass case holding the supplies the ponies would need for battle. Rarity let out an incredibly excited gasp when she saw her suit. It was a fairly simple black jumpsuit made of a fine, very flexible, slightly shiny material. Around the sleeves of the two front forelegs were long, thin, electric blue gems. The, a utility belt fastened around her waist, a beautiful ruby as its buckle. In the holsters of the belt were two weapons crafted like guns, except they fired an endless stream of small hard gems, much like the ones around her hooves. It didn't take Rarity long to discover how to use the gem weapons, and the white unicorn quickly sewed up. Twilight, much to her surprise, found the Mayor Duell suit awaiting her at the end of the hall. Thankfully, did not have the hat or mask, which frankly limited her magic ability. Also, the large purple collar had been removed, and the M clasp on the dark cape had been changed to a six-pointed star, matching Twilight's cutie mark. The Lavender Unicorn donned the guise, smiling as she remembered her time as a hero. This is just like fixing the dam, she told herself. Except, this time, you we're fighting alien creatures and Celestia knows what Discord has planned for us. Twilight giggled nervously. Yep, nothing to fear. Pinkie Pie's suit was a simple black vest with lines of purple racing around it, forming the shapes of balloons and other various party things. She also had a utility belt and a brand new large cylinder quiver with her cutie mark embellished on it. Filled to the capacity with her plunger arrows and, ver and other various prank arrows. A large grin spread out on Pinkie Pie's face as she pulled out an arrow that would explode confetti. Oh, this is going to be super duper fun. Oh, please don't let me get some crazy colorful suit, Applejack pleaded silently. She had seen Captain America's suit, and though it did suit him nicely, she didn't want to end up in some suit like his. It just looked too darn uncomfortable and silly. The Earth Pony nearly flopped down with relief when she saw her suit. It was a it was quite simple. Just a green colored collar and a bow tie. And a bo bolo tie. The pin in the pin in the shape of an apple like her gala dress. She also had a simple utility belt, a long, sturdy lasso at her side. Fluttershy was absolutely frightened. She wasn't sure she, wasn't sure she could go up against those big alien fighters again. The buttered-colored Pegasus slowly walked into her hall, not sure of what she would find. To her surprise, all she saw was a letter from Princess Celestia. Have courage, Fluttershy, it read. Your friends need your help, and though you may not know it, you have a great strength within you to protect them. Reading it made the smallest of smiles fit across Fluttershy's face, and she squared her shoulders, determined to try to help her friends. The five met up with Rainbow Dash and the Avengers in the main hangar where the group split into two quid jets. Thor, Twilight, Pinkie Pie, and Bruce on one, 
with Clint as the pilot, and Rarity, Steve, Applejack, and Fluttershy on the other, with Natasha piloting. Tony and Rainbow zipped beside the two quid jets in their respective suits, no doubt trying to race each other. Fluttershy looked rather uneasy, staring anxiously at the oncoming storm of pink clouds. Are you alright, Sugar Cube? Applejack asked, coming over to her. I'm okay, the Pegasus replied softly, just nervous. Oh, that's quite all right, darling, Rarity assured her. We're all nervous. Fluttershy cocked her head to the side. You are? Rarity, Applejack, and even Steve nodded their heads. Just know that we're right here for you, Applejack stated. Okay, Fluttershy nodded, rising herself to her hose. I can do this. I can do this. Natasha turned to face them from the pilot seat. Guys, we're almost there. The city was in a horrible shape. The Chutara swarmed the streets, accompanied with several monstrous leviathans, and things that could only be of Discord's doing. And to top it off, chocolate rain poured from the sky from those incredibly pesky cotton candy clouds. Though hidden by her mask, Rainbow's face lit up with a huge smile. All right, let's get this party started, she whooped, diving into the fray. Couldn't have said better myself, Dash, Tony stayed following her down. He then tuned in to the comm links of the others. Hey guys, you coming in or what? Applejack jumped at the voice in her ear. What, in tarnations? Hold on, Stark, we're almost there, Natasha replied, steering the quid jet into the streets. Hey, Tony, watch out, Rainbow Dash shouted, zooming across the street, a leviathan straight on her tail. Tony quickly sprang to her aid, flying right beside the great metal beast. He fired several blasts at the creature, scoring direct hits to the side. Suddenly, Rainbow shot into a nosedive, soaring straight to the ground. The leviathan followed suit, but... At the last minute, Rainbow shot upward out of the dive, is damaged from Tony's attacks. Couldn't, put up, eh, couldn't pull up in time and crashed headlong into the street. And that is how you pull off a fantastic Philly Flash. <laughs> the Iron Mare smirked proudly. Good move, Tony commented, flying to Rainbow Dash's side. The two Quidgets landed beside the wreckage, and the Avengers began climbing out of the jets, as Tony and Rainbow touched down. All right, Capsicle, what's the plan? Steve rolled his eyes at, at Tony's nickname for him. Well, the first thing we need to do is get rid of those clouds, he replied. I'll take care of that, Applejack replied, recalling how she had done it the first time Discord had returned. Rainbow? Tony? Can you crowd up those clouds next to that building over yonder? We're on AJ, Rainbow replied, giving her friend a salute before zooming off with Tony. Twilight, could you teleport me up to the top of that building? Applejack asked. Of course, Ap of course, Applejack, Twilight answered. The unicorn's horn glowed, a and in a flash of rosy red light, Applejack had teleported to the top of the building. The orange pony galloped to the corner of the building, pulling out her rope. She twirled the lasso high into the air and successfully looped it around the combat groups of clouds. Holding the rope sturdy in her teeth, Applejack leapt off the building, floating down to the ground with the clouds. She quickly tied the end of the rope to the base of a lamppost, pushing the clouds out of the way. There, Abjack panted, swat, wiping sweat off her forehead. Done. Great work, Applejack, Steve complimented. He turned to the others. All right, Stark, Rainbow Dash, Thor, you three take care of those leviathans. We're on it, Tony replied, striking across the sky. 
Thor gave the captain a swift nod before whirling his hammer and soaring onto the backs of one of the beasts. Applejack turned to Twilight. Twi, you need to use your magic to help us whenever Discord, whatever Discord's got for us. She stated, you know, dancing buffaloes, salt rose, those sorts of things. You got it, Applejack. Twilight galloped off, sending magic bolts at any Chutara that came her way. Pinkie Pie, use your arrows to cover us from the ground. Pinkie Pie gave the captain a salute before speeding off in a pink blur. Clint, you're our sniper. Steve continued. Cover us from the air. Clint nodded, firing a grappling arrow into the nearest building and, and zipping up to the rooftop. Natasha, Rarity, Applejack, and I will fight on the ground. The police have already got most of the civilians to safety, but there are a few still out there. Our most important job is to find where the Chutara are coming from and how to stop them. And hey Bruce? Steve turned to the doctor. Now would be a good time to suit up. St Bruce nodded, the faintest smiles on his face. His muscles tensened. His skin slowly became green as he grew in size. His shirt flying away like paper. The Hulk let out a loud roar, leaping to a passing leviathan and pounding its head. Flarshai, absolutely terrified by the transformation, darted behind one of the Quidjets, shivering with fear. There wasn't too much time to coax her out, of, out from under there. Though, ready or not, the battle had begun. Twilight galloped through the streets, blasting Chitara with energy bolts. Pinkie Pie was right behind her, firing several of her prank arrows at the attackers. One Chitara was frozen solid, and another had what looked like a cupcake shot, th shot through its eye. Many of them had been blasted away with her exploding confetti arrows, which seemed to be Pinkie's personal favorite. Whoa! Pinkie Pie and Twilight were thrown back as a huge stampede of long-legged rabbits trampled past them, groaning. Twilight levitated a carrot from a produce stand beside the two ponies. Pinkie Pie, fire this out of the city, she instructed. Okie dokie, Artichoke, Pinkie Pie replied, snapping the carrot onto an arrow. Hey, she shouted, ca catching the rabbit's attention. Who wants this who wants a delicious, scrumptious, absolutely delightful carrot? All the bunnies nodded. And Pinkie Pie proud, prided herself on her ability to deliciously describe food. Fired the care arrow high out of the city. Suddenly, Twilight noticed Thor struggling with a low chitara on one of the Leviathan's backs. The purple unicorn galloped straight towards the leviathan, or horn glowing with a bright flash. Twilight teleported beside Thor on the great metal beast. Using her magic, Twilight wrenched one of the energy spears from a Chitara. Gasp. Grasp. And began to strike the oncoming attackers. Thor? Twilight fought back to back, throwing various Chitara off the Leviathan. Hey, Hawkeye! Rainbow called through the comlink. How's everyone doing? We're good. Clint replied, firing an explosive arrow into a Chitara's, into one of the Chitara's hovercrafts. Twilight and Thor are taking on a, a squadron down in the southern part of the city. Ah, uh, and they didn't invite me. Rainbow sighed, disappointed, soaring in the direction of a huge leviathan. She was intercepted, however, by a full Chutara hovercraft. All right, you want to play, she taunted. Then let's play, putting her thrusters on full power. She zipped down the street. Banking hard to the right, the Chutara, unable to duplicate the move, crashed right into a fat lamp post on the street corner. Rainbow smirked, continuing her way to Thor and Twilight. 
Both were battling it out with several Chutara, many falling back, falling off the back of the great beast. Thor leapt into the air, bringing his hammer down onto the Leviathan's head with full force, leaving a rather huge dent in the metal plating. Twilight lowered her horn, magenta light swirling around it. A beautiful discharge. A powerful discharge of energy blasted from her horn, sending the Leviathan into the ground. Guess you two didn't need me after all, Rainbow chuckled, soaring in another direction. Meanwhile, Natasha and Rarity were battling a combination of Tutar and dancing buffalo beside the quid jets. If they weren't fighting for their lives and quite possibly the freedom of the world, Natasha would have found the situation quite amusing. The Black Widow slipped a pair of electric taser discs toward the trio of Dancing Buffalo, the discs catching the middle buffalo's legs. The buffalo shuddered as electric, electrical shock, as, a, as electrical shocked its body. Knocking both of its partners down in a in its frenzy. Wonderful move, darling. Rarity commented, firing her gym weapons. The weapons had proven to be every bit as, as effective as guns, and Rarity could easily wield them with her magic. The unicorn swift di swiftly dived out of the way as a Chitara fired at her. The bolt soaring The bolt soared past her and beneath the Quidjet, striking the ground right beside Fluttershy, who had managed to remain hidden. The bolt nearly hit her, singeing some of her pink tail hairs. But that was enough to get the yellow Pegasus angry. Very angry. Fluttershy charged out from under the quid jet. Her teal eyes narrowed. You make me lose? She said, I blow my fuse. Rarity's eyes widen in shock and worry. Nasty Fluttershy was about to make another appearance. And it was not going to be pretty. Pinkie Pie had joined Hawkeye up on the rooftops, both firing various types of arrows. Clint was quite impressed with Pinkie's assortment of arrows and other weapons on her utility belt. Are you giving them cake? He asked upon seeing that Pinkie Pie was throwing some cupcakes from her belt. I'm not giving them cake, Pinkie Pie replied. I'm assaulting them with cake. The pink pony paused for a moment, staring down into the fray. Hey, look! Fluttershy's fighting! You go, sister! Clint shook his head at the pony's silly antics. He swiftly fired a grappling arrow to another building, swinging onto a new rooftop. Pinkie Pie didn't seem to mind his leaving, though she was too busy giving her... Assaulting the Chitara with cakes and arrows. That is quite the weaponry, weaponry you have there, my little pony. A voice stared from behind her. Pinky whirled around to see a figure clad in black and green robes standing beside her, behind her. A large golden helm on his head. You, she cried, firing an arrow at him. Loki easily dodged the arrow, walking closer to the pink pony. Yes, me. You stay away from my friends, you big fat meanie! Pinky shouted. Loki chuckled, raising his staff. You have heart, my little pony. He smiled, pressing the tip of his staff to Pinky's chest. The pink pony's pupils suddenly dilated, nearly filling her filling up her whole eye. 
before they were normal again. Pinky's irises flooded with bright tesseract blue. Suddenly darker, slightly darker than her usual eye color. Her frizzy pink hair deflated, becoming straight as a board as she gazed at Loki with emotionless eyes. The god of mischief smirked. You will come with me, Miss Pie. Pinky Pie nodded, putting away her bow. Okie dokie, Loki. Captain America ran through the streets of the city, chasing after the serpent shadow he, he swore he saw. He paused at an empty intersection, staring, staring whirl, whirly around him. Suddenly, a serpent shape whisked past him, heading straight into a nearby alleyway. Without hesitation, Steve followed it, only to find himself at an empty dead end. Where are you? he demanded. Show yourself! Not so loud, my dear captain. A voice chatted from the shadows. A strange lady stepped out toward Steve. Her face was quite young, yet she had fluffy white hair that fell to her shoulders. Her skin was unusually gr was an unusual grayish tint. She wore a long reddish brown dress which with what seemed to be a pair of blue wings protruding from her back. Who are you? Steve questioned, raising his shield. I am a fortune teller, she replied, voice soft and snake-like. And I have a fortune to tell you. Steve shook his head. I don't believe in that sort of thing. But you should, the lady stated, coming closer. For I have seen things that you have not. Why don't you come, come and take a peek? She whirled her hand at one of the walls, and suddenly the blank bricks became vivid with the scene. Thor, Tony, Natasha, Bruce, Twilight, Rarity, and Flareshy were all gathered in the lab, chatting away. You know, Tony remarked, I honestly have no clue why Steve is even on our team. I mean... He's nothing but dead weight. Tony's statement was met with pearls of laughter from everyone. Ponies and Avengers alike. And have you seen his outfit? Rarity inquired. Why, it's a fashion disaster. We don't actually even need him on the team, Bruce stated. He doesn't have anything that we don't already have, does he? Well, now that I think about it, well, now that I think about it, you already have superhuman strength with Thor here. Fireshy said quietly, and superhuman agility with the Iron Man suit, so he really doesn't have anything super special. And besides, he doesn't even know how to use half the appliances on here. Twilight added, I mean, even I could figure out some of those things. The whole group la laughed. Thor's booming laugh louder than the rest. Steve stared in shock at the scene. So, the team doesn't want me? He asked softly. They laugh at me? The lady nodded. Your honesty and loyalty to them has never approved. Was never. The lady nodded. Your honesty and loyalty to them 
was never appreciated. It's time that you left your team and go away. The colors seemed to drain from Captain America. The red, white, and blue of his suit and shield fading gray. Smirking, the lay quickly transformed to Discord, slithering off into a different part of the city. There you are, Cap! A relief Applejack stood in the entryway of the alley. We've been looking for you. We needed... We need you... You're needed out there in the field. She paused, looking at him. What are you doing here anyways? That's none of your business, Steve snapped, brushing past the orange pony. Why does the team need me? Did they suddenly run out of superheroes? He angrily stroll, strolled away, not even looking back. Well, that's odd, Applejack remarked. Was it me, or did he seem kind of grayish? Gazed out at the fight scene below, with Loki and Pinkie Pie. The Avengers and ponies were bravely battling the oncoming forces of chaos. The dragon cuis sighed. This the battle had lasted for over an hour now, and this was beginning to become boring for Discord. He turned to Loki. My friend, I believe it's time to cause chaos elsewhere. Indeed, Loki replied. There is now something I must retrieve to complete our plan. But rest assured, my friend, Equestia will be yours soon enough. Discord smiled, and Midgard will be yours. He snapped his fingers, and with a blinding flash of green light, Discord, Loki, Pinkie Pie, the Chitar, and the Chaos disappeared. The Avengers and Ponies stared around, surprised. Is it over? Twilight questioned. It seems so, Thor replied. But Loki would not give in this easily. He must be planning something. Can we discuss this? Can we... Can we discuss what he's planning on the helicarrier? Rarity questioned. I'm exhausted, and just look at my mane. Everyone seemed to be quite worn out, too. Everyone, even Rainbow Dash and Tony stumbled onto the quid jets, not even bothering to check their numbers. I never want to see another dancing buffalo again, Tony groaned, rubbing his temples. Bruce nodded in agreement. Wrapped in a spare coat found in the jet. <sighs> Who knew fine chaos would be so darn tiring, Applejack wondered. I'm plumb tuckered out. Maybe this is going to be a lot harder than we thought, Twilight stated. I've never seen fights like this before. Not even during the Changeling invasion. I miss my nap, Rainbow Dash grumbled. They all reached the helicarrier within minutes, where Rainbow Dash promptly cr collapsed on the ground, taking her belay a nap. Tony smiled at the snoozing pony before staring around at the group. Hey, where's the capsicle? Last I saw him, he was walking off on his own, Applejack stated. I thought he came back and got on the other jet. Clint, he wasn't on your quid jet, Natasha asked. Clint shook his head. I thought he was on yours. Flourish I gazed around the hangar. Has anyone seen Pinkie Pie? Suddenly, Nick Fury strolled into the hangar, an irate expression on his face. Pie and Rogers have been compromised. Chapter 6 The Return of the Party Cannon What? A huge uproar erupted at Nick's comment. All signs of fatigue disappeared as both Avengers and ponies began to stress and worry about Pinkie Pie and the Captain. Even Rainbow Dash jolted out of her nap, which is a very rare occasion, to fly straight up to the director's face 
and demand answers. <clears throat> what the hey do you mean compromised? The rainbow mared Pegasus shouted. I mean that both Miss Pie and Rogers have left us for some reason or another, Nick explained. The problem is, we don't exactly know what happened to them and how to find them and how and how to bring them back to us. <clears throat> well, where were they last seen, Natasha questioned. I have many of our agents doing their best to track the two, Nick answered. So far, Miss Pie was last seen working with Loki. Rarity gasped. But Pinky would never work for a ruffian like him. Not willingly. Clint spoke up, a serious expression on his face. But Loki's staff has the power to control minds. He must have used it to turn Pinky to his side. Make her work for him. A distressed silence met Clint's remark. <clears throat> Nearly everyone's brow caused in worry. The ponies were gazing at each other, absolutely terrified for their friend. My control. The only time any pony had ever seen anything like it was during the, the Changeling invasion, when the queen had weakened Shining Armor's mind, making him a mere shell of himself. But the ability to control the mind, to make someone work for you, was something very... was something they never dealt with before. Eventually, Tony broke the silence. Well, what about the captain? He's not under Loki's control, too, is he? No. Nick answered gravely. Rogers was last seen wandering in a few... Wondering, in a few towns over. <clears throat> he didn't seem to be working for anyone, but he does seem to be acting the complete opposite of himself. Some witnesses have stated that the color of his suit seemed to have faded to gray. That does not seem to be one of Loki's tricks, Thor remarked. I do, I do not believe my brother could turn anyone gray. Your brother didn't do that, Applejack responded. It was discord. He did the same thing to all of us when we first fought him. He showed us all things that weren't true, which made us act all different from our usual selves. The earth pony shook her head. I should have known that that was what happened when I first saw him. Discord's trick to make the color. Discord's trick takes the color right out of you, making you look grayish. So, what should we do? Flash I asked timidly. <clears throat> At this, everyone burst into an argument, shouting out their opinions. Director Fury stated that they should focus on Discord and Loki, saving both the captain and Pinky later. This was met by many objections, mainly by Clint and Applejack, both whom were extremely close to both of their compromised victims. Tony and Rainbow Dash were already suited up, ready to jump out of the helicarrier at any moment to rescue the two. Thor was beginning to swing his hammer, waiting to find Lo wanting to find Loki and bring him back to Asgard before more harm was done. Natasha, Rarity, and Bruce were doing their best to find some middle ground, and Twilight was pacing nervously, trying to create a plan. Fluttershy, meanwhile, had cowered down close to the ground, clasping her hooves over her head in an attempt to block out the bickering. Eventually, the yellow pegasus had heard enough. Quiet! she shouted, drawing all the attention in the room to her. Immediately, she dripped down, lowering her voice. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be more assertive. But any, anyhow, we need to start ar stop arguing. Yelling at each other isn't helping any pony. A moment of silence met her remark before Bruce spoke up. Fluttershy's right. I mean, the last time we argued, we turned into a time bomb and, well, 
the other guy got a chance to come out. All right, every pony. I think I've come up with a plan. Twilight remarked. Everyone gathered around her, waiting to, waiting for the unicorn to speak. Applejack, Mr. Stark, Natasha, Dr. Banner, and I will go find the captain. I still remember the memory spell I used the last time to restore us, and hopefully it should work. And meanwhile, Clint, Rarity, Thor, Rainbow Dash, and Flowershy will attempt to bring Pinkie Pie back. And if you can, find and capture Loki. Director, you will be our home base. You need to keep us updated on everything. Sounds like a pan sounds like a plan, Twilight. Applejack replied. Everyone see everyone else seemed to agree with the orange earth pony.